This is Vanessa Marshall, voice of Black Canary, and you're listening to Whelmed, The Young Justice Files. Recognized, Uncle Walker, D-0-1. Recognized, DJ Weaver 29, D-4-9. Hello team. Today in the Watchtower, we're joined by Dylan Weaver. Dylan is the co-host and co-creator of the Wadfam Chalk Pod, a podcast about <laughs> adventures in Odyssey. Adventures in Odyssey, or Odyssey, Uh, is an evangelical Christian radio drama and comedy series created and produced by Focus on the Family for Kids. The series first aired in 1987 as a 13-episode pilot and has 800 episodes (laughs) to date. You've taken on quite a project here, Dylan. Dylan, thanks so much for joining us in the Watchtower. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're not trying to be comprehensive in any way there because I, uh, I don't want to be doing this till I'm till I'm 50. <laughs> I thought the first like, you know, 46 was tough. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that our discussion episodes draw on anything and everything related to Young Justice up to and including episode 13 of season three, the comics and the video game. If you've not seen, read, or played all the material and are spoiler wary, please consider this your warning. And with all that out of the way, uh, let's dive in. Uh, so I touched on a few things in the intro here, but tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do in the world. Yeah, so I am an IT professional by day, and by night I moonlight as a podcast recorder. Um, <laughs> I started started a podcast with a friend of mine. We were just having a conversation about Adventures in Odyssey as a thing that we both grew up from, with and then kind of grew out of. Um, yeah. But it was just... I have never heard of this <laughs> at all. I mean, yeah. I was... In 87, I was 17 or 18 going to college anyway, <laughs> yep. and I did, not, I did not grow up in, though my, my family is Christian, we didn't, we didn't actually go to, I went to a bunch of churches when I was younger and, yep. and kind of grew away from that with my own spirituality, but um, it's not something that was on, um, I remember watching stuff <laughs> like Davy and Goliath. Yeah, okay. And, yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, that kind of thing when I was younger. But this is not something <laughs> I have ever heard of. So what? Eight hundred episodes? Yeah. So it's it's a radio drama, um, and they've been putting out, I don't know, roughly twenty four episodes per year since eighty seven, um, and that uh, that adds up. Two episodes a month for ever. Wow. Yeah. Thirty years. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's. It's got a weird following. It's not a I, our podcast isn't trying to have broad appeal because it is such a niche <laughs> a niche topic. Yeah, I understand, but, yeah, sure. But there's I don't know. There's something about this kind of tie between Christianity and the pop culture that's created within it that means that a lot of kids who grew up in Christian households had like limited access to pop culture, oh, and so you get a lot of i at you know at a point had listened to every episode and a lot of them many times just because that was a thing that was available right and so it just it was a weird thing if i was talking with this friend and it came up for whatever reason and we were just kind of like you know as much as like that was a part of my identity and now is not at all that could be fun to dive into interesting well, I'm, yeah. I'm a bit fascinated now. You've cracked open a whole new thing. I mean, it sounds like when somebody says like it's got a niche following but has 800 episodes, and I'm a big radio drama fan. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Decoder Ring Theater, which is uh, relatively modern. You know, they use old-time radio kind of tropes and styles, but a little right. bit more modern storytelling to an extent to tell stories that, like their main character is, the red panda who's kind of a combination <laughs> of the shadow and the spirit and you know uh batman and that kind of stuff from the old radio dramas right. all amalgamated together and set in toronto and canada you know <laughs> so it's it's great it's fun it's fun stuff um i i don't 
I'm sorry, I'm still boggled by the 800 episodes. So I'm assuming that you guys aren't <laughs> aren't going to be going episode by episode with this. You're are you picking out key things that either had like a positive or interesting influence on you or like struck you as strange or odd kind of a thing? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, basically we're cherry picking what we like. They did throughout the run a couple of these big arcs over uh 30 some episodes. You know, from time to time they do where it's kind of all very close knit. And so we decide to start off going through one of those. Yeah. Um, and then as we proceed, it'll be kind of whatever we feel like doing, or maybe we'll jump into another big arc. Right. Maybe we'll do a one off episode about something that we were like it was kind of weird. They have a they have a uh D and D uh parody episode okay where they're where they're it's called castles and cauldrons uh-huh. but they come at it it's the 80s so it's oh, being goodness. come at from a very very uh yeah just warped sense of what those things were and right. it's oh i lived it'll i be... lived through it man it was it was <laughs> yeah. not it was not great <laughs> i have to tell you in the south not great um, yeah interesting I, I believe it i a modern take a modern view of a storytelling breakdown of something so his- historical now would be fascinating. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, you you and I have talked quite a bit since our show came on the air, too. You've been active on Twitter with us and chatting with us. Oh, yeah. And But I, I don't know a lot about the history of what your history is with Young Justice. So um, how, when did you see, did you see Young Justice in the original run? Did you watch it on Netflix, digital? What, what's your story there? Yeah, I watched it. I watched it during the Netflix era of the show pretty early on, um, just kind of because the people I ran around with at the time were really into comics and mm-hmm. it was uh, superheroes and that sort of thing. And it was brought up and I loved it and uh, found out, you know, there is no season. Season three right. was fairly active on the uh Young Justice needs a season three on Facebook, right? Right. Um, which I know you've had uh, you've had him on as well. Yeah. Talk about stuff mm-hmm. and and yeah, it was actually through that page that I found the show. Oh, nice, awesome. So what's your? So it sounds like you kind of touched on this a little bit, but you were talking about how this this radio drama you're talking about almost acted like a bit of a like a Venn diagram crossover between maybe you and certain pop culture tropes and ideas. Is that true? Yeah. So, it, so what was your there's... history with, sorry, I, I want to hear, sorry, I didn't mean oh, to interrupt yeah. you, but, but no. you know, I, I want to hear like your history with comics and stuff uh, from that perspective, as well as other <laughs> pop culture as well. Yeah. I, my, uh, my comic history is, uh, was, I was definitely a late start on that. Um, however, kind of my, my introduction to superheroes was both through the reading um, Sunday comics that would come out with the newspaper <laughs> right, yeah, for and sure. get in the get in the three to six panels of Amazing Spider-Man every week. <laughs> right. I'm laughing because so. I'm with you, man. <laughs> so so that was that was a lot of my a lot of my exposure on the Marvel side was just like, oh, uh, Vulture looks like a vulture and he fights Spider-Man and I know that. <laughs> right, right. Um, and then the the DC angle is, is more um, coming from Lego because Lego was a huge part of my oh, growing up too and they got licensed for Batman stuff. Right. Um, and so that was kind of my exposure there and playing through the I knew the major beats of Batman because of the Lego Batman video game, not from mu- movies or comics. Yeah, so that's a first <laughs> on the show, I think. Uh, me being a big Lego maniac when I was a kid too, I totally get that. I get that idea. Yeah. Like we had we had this, we had Star Wars, but when we had action figures and the and Legos came out with all the space stuff, we were always getting our action Star Wars action figure stuff involved with all the space <laughs> Lego astronaut guys who were coming out in the eighties. Um, <laughs> yeah, but that is imagine. absolutely absolutely a first. So what you got? You got to tell me more about that experience. So it was at the 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 way they came out. So I was really big on Star Wars. Star Wars was like my biggest pop culture touchstone right um and lego star wars obviously with that and then the lego star wars video games came out and they were great and then the next one was they did was batman and i was like well i guess i like batman now (laughs) so 
you know, okay. play play through that and get to see get to know different villains and get to see some of the beats and kind of the whole bat family experience right. yeah, was yeah. a lot of my a lot of my DC knowledge is still Batman centric because that was just the first first exposure. Okay, I'm I'm fascinated by all this. So wait, wait, so wait, <laughs> when so when did did have you have you did, dived into comics specifically at all or is a lot of this from oh, like yeah. say the animated series and these other uh, media yeah so i up until the 2012 avengers movie the, the big one yeah came out i had basically i don't think i'd ever touched a comic outside of the sunday ones okay um and actually that's not true because my brother had got i have a younger brother who had gotten a couple um of like Marvel for kids comic books oh, okay. with sure. random characters thrown in. And right. I read through some of those just because I was an avid reader. Right, sure. Yeah. Um, and then uh, The Avengers comes out, kind of puts superheroes on my radar in a way that they hadn't been hmm. um, and was so big within within my friends that I was like, you know what? Like, I want to become an expert on this stuff. <laughs> and I'm... Never, never quite made it to expert level, but <laughs> right. did some deep dives into different things. Kind of decided, you know, this person's going to be my favorite character. I'm going to know everything about them. I'm going to read all of these issues, like kind of jumped all over the place right? and built up my comic knowledge from there. Okay. So aside from, okay. So aside from Batman, <laughs> <laughs> we're getting to the topic we're going to have today and I'm, I'm getting there. This, this, uh, this path to it is interesting. So aside from the Batman, like Lego universe, where you kind of get introduced to, to that, those kind of char- character tropes and ideas from Batman, what was, what, when you say like, oh, okay, this character I, I like, I'm going to dive into that. What was your first or the earliest DC character that wasn't Batman that really drew? Right. So, so the first, the first one I, I really latched onto was Nightwing. Ex- well, uh, excellent. Good, good choice. <laughs> good. Yeah. <laughs> Strong choice. Um, so on the Marvel end of things, I really latched on to the Richard Rider Nova, um, oh, which is interesting. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's a, uh, he's a Marv Wolfman character right. who's the creator uh-huh. and who also created Nightwing. Right. Um, the not Dick, but Nightwing. Right. Yeah. Um, and so there was kind of that link in my head of like just going through Wikipedia and being like, well, this guy was in the Bat family and he was created by a guy I really like. So let's let's see what he's all about. Right. right. And um, and so I read a lot of the yeah, a lot of the night. This was what this is around around New 52 resetting everything right, sure. as well. Yeah. And so I right. yeah. Um, so I was diving into new 52 as this jumping point, but then the mythology of that wasn't lining up with what I learned from video games <laughs> and from talking with friends. And so I kind of backpedaled, mm-hmm. um, and read stuff all over the place. Someone would say, Hey, read this, or I would see characters at this point. I've seen young justice. So that also starts to mean that I have more attachment to certain characters. Right. Um, and you have a, you have and, a breadth of characters. Like, you know, we don't do a deep dive on Dr. Fate, but you kind of get an idea of who Dr. Fate is and what Dr. Exactly. Fate's about basically. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that really expands my, my knowledge, but I flirt back and forth between Marvel and DC and read another, other random stuff. Um, and, I don't know. Through some sort of uh, a mess, I land on <laughs> the uh, 2003 to 2007 run of The Outsiders. Wow. Okay. So this is where <laughs> this is this is where things get interesting because I'm like, okay, wait. So you started reading <laughs> comics in 2011, 2012 ish, but yeah. we're going to be talking about Outsiders today. Now, <laughs> Outsiders originally came out. Back when I was when I was a kid in the seventies, yep, where Batman leaves the Justice League, just kind of like we see in the first half of season three, um, and picks up these characters. He Black Lightning, who had been an established character, but um, he had 
again, lost access to his powers because a, a child got accidentally killed during one of his things. And, um, we, then we, but they introduced Halo, they introduced Katana. I'm not sure it, it metamorpho. I'm not sure if he was originally introduced in the outsiders or if he'd been around for a little while. Um, and then Geoforce, who was all new. So there's a lot of new characters and being introduced at that, at that time. But I'm like, Outsiders is not a comic that most people have read. <laughs> and you, yeah. you like had the shotgun effect of like picking up all of these random things. And dip, like, just give it to me. I'm going to absorb it. Just give it to me. Yeah. So what, what was it about the Outsiders, particularly in this run, which I have not read, actually? Yeah. That drew so you? they're... they're there was, I don't know, a couple different store chains that carried these, basically it was trading card packs of comic books. Okay, So yes. it was a pack of 10 random, probably 90s era <laughs> comic books, all bagged up. You didn't know what you were getting. Right. You could buy them real cheap. And so I bought a couple of those at random and, you know, read all of them. And then the ones that I kind of latched onto, I then sought out um at this point through either digitally through comiXology or that sort of thing right. or trade paperback right um right. being the way rather than buying individual issues because most of the stuff i was reading was runs that were complete yeah um which was something that i liked yeah. it was it was fun to go after things where i'm like no this has a beginning middle and end mm-hmm. i don't have to be waiting every month for a new issue to come out yeah i don't think you're alone in that too you know like i I think it's i think it's really cool that you got these like sampler packs basically of a bunch of different stuff that you could get an idea of things but when you did that clearly there was at least one outsider's comic in one of these packs right so yeah what what was it and and the ones that you got were the the old original run back from the 70s or was it uh, the new one or both or what was it yeah, so the the Outsiders comic I ended up with was from the 2003 to 2007 run. Okay, okay. Um, and so I actually, you, it's uh, it's framed on the wall behind me, along with a handful of other comics. <laughs> I see books them. I've, yes, I've picked up. <laughs> um, and it was it the thing that drew me in more than anything was just like, hey, this is a random team of characters, but there are characters on here. I know because Nightwing is on the team at this point, as well as Arsenal. Oh, interesting. Oh, Arsenal. Was this, was it just called outsiders or was it called something else? Was it called Arsenal and the outsiders or red hood and the outsiders? They, so there's a new 52 that's uh red hood and the outlaws. Gotcha. Thank um, you. I but keep getting this confused is, with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's an understandable mistake because <laughs> arsenal's been on both teams right exactly um, but this uh this 2003 run was af kind of this team formed out of the rubble of the teen titans and young justice oh someone told okay i have heard about this but i have not read any of these so who's who's the roster who's the roster like the core roster of the team members so we have Arsenal starts the team. This is Roy Harper, Arsenal. Okay. Um, and then he asks he asks Dick to come on. And then we also, the like first issue lineup, we have uh, Thunder, okay. Anissa Pierce. So uh, Black, Black Lightning's, Lightning's daughter. daughter. One, of da- one of his daughters, right? Yep. We've got Grace Choi, oh, yeah. who is cr- created, I think, for this series. Yeah, she's kind of, um, if I remember correctly, she's kind of a, a brick character. Like, she's she's a kind of a, a strength-based hero, right? Yep. Yeah, she's she's half Amazon. Oh, um, And all of her powers are beat em up <laughs> um, And then Metamorpho okay. is on the team as the one person from the original run. Okay. Um, with a bit of a twist. Um, cause it's not metamorpho. Um, wait, do we know that or at, at the beginning of the series? No. And then it's, and then it's a reveal, oh, okay. um, as you go in that he's a splintered off portion of metamorpho. Um, what? Okay. So <laughs> going, going real, real deep and, and crazy here and reel me in if I, if I get off track, but the um 
in the original run of the outside of like Batman and the Outsiders, like the classic, right? Classic run of those comics, you had uh, there was an event in which Metamorpho dies. Okay. Um, and so, uh, potential crashing the mode for uh for future episodes. <laughs> hey, we got a, knows, we got a spoiler warning in the but, front. So yeah, go for it. <laughs> but uh, um, so Jace, Doctor uh, Jace, who we are very familiar yes. with, yes, is an agent for the Manhunters. Okay, it's revealed that she's an agent for the Manhunters. Okay, okay, just to clarify, there's the Manhunters who are the robots, the androids that preceded the yes. Green Lantern Corps, and then there, there's Manhunter who is a character who is a human, and then there's Martian yes. Manhunter as well. So the, <laughs> yeah. the Manhunters, you're talking about the original pre-Green Lantern yep. police the universe. Pre-Green Lantern Police the universe, man She's hunters. An agent. Okay, I'm following you. I'm caught yep. up. Go ahead. And so, <laughs> in this climatic event, she blows up herself along with Metamorpho. Okay. And Metam- <laughs> and Metamorpho, being made of elements, right. is dispersed, and one of his pieces be- gains sentience and becomes shift. Okay. And so he's got scattered memories. He doesn't know who he is. He knows bits and pieces. Okay. And he's introduced at the beginning of the 2003 run as Metamorpho. Um, okay. So <laughs> I have questions. <laughs> so so did the original Metamorpho come back? Or is this now a like a new metamorpho that takes the place of the old one and is kind of a reason to narratively reboot the character? Or is it just a second metamorpho? It, so the original metamorpho does come back. Okay, okay. And he is really angry about the fact that this shift guy has been masquerading himself as metamorpho. Okay. And so he is just like, I'm just going to touch this guy, absorb him back into me. And the Outsiders team fights for him and is like, no, this guy is sentient. Yeah. Like, you can't do that. Yeah. And he eventually comes around. Interesting. Um, okay. Okay. So then there's a period, and this is when he changes his name to Shift from Metamorpho. Okay. So there's Metamorpho and Shift um, okay. for a period. Uh-huh. And then, and then they do end up reconnecting in kind of a moment of like we need our combined strength and they become one metamorpho that we then have going forward okay so now currently in the storylines there's a single metamorpho right who is we eventually we eventually get to that point during the run of the 2003 outsiders okay all right (laughs) i'm having to recover from my brain being rocked a little bit here there's a lot going on okay so arsenal Nightwing, Thunder. Yep. You said Thunder, right? Yep. Thunder. Right. Grace Choi. Grace Choi, and Shift. Yes. Any other? Members? And there's there's one other member on the first issue, um, which is Indigo. It, oh wait, Indigo. Wait, uh, hold on. I'm I'm dusting off some files. Uh, <laughs> Indigo was an android. Correct. Yes. Was she yes. somehow connected or related to the Brainiac series? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So she is a Brainiac-ish android. Okay. I don't remember. She's from the future. Yeah, because I because um, I remember this had some tie to the Legion of Superheroes, where Brainiac Five was somehow involved, and I've yeah, uh, but I can't remember the entire story. And. Uh, does she go evil? I want to say she goes evil, but that's like, I mean, yes. that's pretty much just a coin flip for any character in the DC universe, right? <laughs> yeah. So this is... <laughs> <laughs> Did they go this evil is, at some point? Yes. Oh, okay. Just checking. This is after she's evil. So she was... I don't, I don't know all the details of this, but she was sent, came back from the future, is part of the death of Donna Troy okay and yes. of Omen which kicks off Young Justice and Teen Titans crumbling 
Okay. And out of that is birthed the Outsiders, and she comes in as a member of the Outsiders, but as reprogrammed or repurposed or whatever. She's not evil anymore. Okay. <laughs> wow. All right. Yeah. Um, and obviously, uh, Nightwing has a bit of an issue with that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would think so. Um, in the comic, in the, in the, in the comics history, um, Dick and Donna almost got married or did get married. Oh, yeah. They were real close to getting married. Um, and she ended up marrying this other guy who was a kind of a tool. Um, <laughs> uh, but Dick and Donna were very, very close. So, um, yeah, I could see him not handling that particularly well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is, <laughs> this is a lot. So, so in this run, how long did you say it ran? 2003 to when? 2007. Okay, so it was a four-year run. So in the, in, the, yeah. in the run of modern comics titles, a four-year run's pretty good. We're talking close oh, yeah. to 50 issues, right? Yeah, they, they clock out right around 50. Okay, okay. So, so, what, so the shift storyline is one of those storylines. Are you seeing, and, and clearly, the fact that Jace is in there is rocking me. Like, are there, are there <laughs> other ties from that 50 issue run that you're kind of seeing echoes of or, or like at least nods to in, in, in particularly this third season of Young Justice? Yeah, well, so the, the biggest thing of interest with this run was just the fact that this is the first Outsiders with both Nightwing and Arsenal being on it. They were not a classic member right of it right and the the fact that so donna troy dies young justice teen titans they disband and uh then arsenal comes to nightwing pitches this team as a way of we are just going to be work partners teen titans was a family this is not a family okay because Dick is very jaded at this point, and he doesn't want to be part of another team that just ends in mm, that sounds people familiar. he's close to dying, <laughs> right, right? Right, yeah. Right? So this becomes a team of people who don't really have personal connections. They are not living together. They just are work buddies. Okay. Now, um, what I do seem to remember, because as you're talking, I'm getting bits and pieces of, I think I may have read a couple of issues of this now that I'm thinking about it because I, I'm picturing in my head there's a scene between Roy and uh, Grace. Did Roy and Grace have a thing? Roy and Grace do have a have a thing okay. for a little while okay. throughout okay. this series. Because I seem to remember a particular... Because I was con- I think it stuck in my mind because I was like, wait, I don't know who this character is. <laughs> I, who, I mean, yeah. Grace is new and there seems to be a history here, so I'm definitely missing something. Um, yep. So what is that? What was that about? You said there, I mean, it, which I think is poignant considering you just said they're not family, they're not close, they're coworkers. And so this is a different kind of dynamic. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very much a way of just the two of them get together and blow off steam. Ah, um, I gotcha. It's not a, uh, like dating relationship. Okay. Okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. All right. So. Who are the who are the antagonists in this series? Fifty issues. You've got a. Is there a core? <laughs> is there a core group like a rogues gallery for them? So they bounce all over the place, um, and basically are just adopting characters either from the original run of of the Outsiders, so more of the classic villains, or they're pulling from people the Teen Titans have fought Mm -hmm. um there's a lot of um there's a lot of brother blood okay um, all right classic titans villain right yep and uh sabak is in it for a stretch wait sabak the shazam captain marvel villain yes what (laughs) um like like i'm saying it's all over the place there is there's a short period where they're running around with uh, Captain Marvel Jr. and Black Lightning. Uh-huh. Um, they kind of come in for a couple issues and they beat Sabak and then they. Did you say? You know, sorry, did you say Captain Marvel this, Jr.? So yes. Freddie Freddie Freeman. Okay. Yep. And you know what? Now that I think about it, there is Sabak and uh, Ibak and Sabak are mentioned in Young Justice. They're mentioned yeah. in, a, in a news broadcast at some point. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, think I, about I it. vaguely remembered them that that coming up. I think it was in se- but, season one. Yeah, um, but yeah, this is. Uh, I don't know. There, there's a lot of interesting stuff that's just like this era specific. Uh, Lex Luthor's president, right? Um, right. And Jefferson Pierce, the Secretary of Education. Oh, um, right. I forgot which, about that. Okay, right. Which could be a really interesting thing. In Young Justice, I don't know that they're going to do anything with that, yeah. but who knows? He doesn't have his. He's he's not doing the superhero thing right now. Yeah. So you know, I uh, okay. I'm, I have to I have to say I'm fascinated because because when you said you wanted to come on and talk about the Outsiders, of course I'm thinking the original Outsiders characters, right, Run? But yeah. what you're yeah, talking yeah. about is way more, way <laughs> more. You know, like connected to the Young Justice we're seeing right now. I mean, obviously with Dick leading this team, but it's kind of this mishmash. It's almost like what they did with the original team, right? Because it was a bit of... Right. I mean, you have the clone Superboy was never part of the original Titans, right? Right. But you also have characters who were part of the original Titans. And you yep. have a character in Dick who's kind of a combination of Dick and Tim's skill sets. And Tim was in right. the new Young Justice while Dick was in the old Outsiders. So it's this amalgam of, of things going on. And it seems like they, they're they drawing from some of that for this season of Young Justice. Like, hearkening back to, the, the obviously, the original Outsiders crew. Um, right. While still kind of having these kind of, these, these through lines or these nodding to some of these stories you're talking about. Yeah, well, it's the it's the thing of they both bring in some of the characters from the original series in the fact from the original Outsider series and the fact that we get Katana and we get Metamorpho right. um, and Geoforce for that matter. Right, right. But we're getting a lot of the dynamic of this um, of this you know 2003 run where you know Dick's running the show and there's. Yeah, this this pull away from, um, from being you know close friends and some of that stuff that that we're seeing echoed a little bit more in the show, um, that yeah, yeah is clearly pulling from modern influence. Well, I have to say, like it was confusing to me. Like we see in, in some of the early art, we saw the Outsiders promo art had Metamorpho oh, yeah. and Katana and Forager and Halo. So, and, and Nightwing, yep. and so it was like, oh, okay, this is what we're doing. We're doing Nightwing and the Outsiders instead of Batman and the Outsiders. Okay, cool. Well, now we get this thing, and we've seen Katana and Metamorpho, but I don't think Katana says a single word, and Metamorpho has a yep. couple of lines, and they're already working with Batman. Clearly, they've worked together for years. Well, yeah, and Katana was literally on the yeah, on league. the league exactly, and I'm like, well, where would Metamorpho come from? Like, he's very, yeah, he's got they they're giving this Metamorpho a definitely a, a very um uh, a last uh, a plastic man um kind of personality, kind of the joking, yeah, mouthy, weird shape changing yep. sense of humor kind of things that you that I attribute to classic Plaz, right, right, um in this, but he's, I mean, clearly they they've been a team and worked together, but now it kind of is disjointed in my head from the fact that Geoforce and Halo are brand new characters and Katana and Metamorpho are not just kind of new ish. Like they're well established, right? right? You don't get on the justice league right out of the bat. So, yeah. um, yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated by this. Like, are we going to get Katana and Metamorpho joining the outsiders? Like we saw in this promo art, or was that just a ruse? Right. Well, yeah, that was that was definitely a uh, a ch- change of things for me. It's interesting getting to talk to you after having seen these first 13 episodes cuz right, right. when we when I initially approached you about this, <laughs> right. it was we didn't we just knew it was Young Justice Outsiders and I was like, "Well, I love the Outsiders. Let's let's talk." I think it's been close to 6 months we've been trying to have this conversation. <laughs> I think yeah, I that, had to reschedule. That sounds reasonable. I've had to reschedule 3 or 4 times. You've had to reschedule uh, as well. It's been actually yeah. it almost got to be just hilarious. Um, yeah. So yeah, you're right. When we first started talking about this, I was like, "Yeah, let's let's get you on the show and give people a primer about the Outsiders before the season starts." You're right. Now it's fascinating to see this. So in this run that you're talking about, do and I mean obviously Metamorpho, there's a version of Metamorpho and then he combines together with Shift to become a single entity again. But does Katana come in and join that team for for an arc or a period of time? So this series 
flows immediately into another one. So DC okay. tends to do this from time to time where they like cancel one series only to like as like a soft reboot. Right. And so from this two th- so there's the 2003 2007 run like 50 issues. Then they do a series called Five of a Kind. Okay. Five of a Kind. All. Batman, it's just five issues. Like it's just this mini series to bridge a gap. And Batman comes in takes over the outsiders okay and he decides to he's going to run this group under the radar as a black ops outside of the jurisdiction of the justice league okay and he issues a test wherein he is having basically two different people compete for a spot on the team okay (laughs) all right so at this point, by the end of our of our fifty run, our fifty issue run, we have uh, Jade becoming part of the team for a while. Daughter of Alan Scott, partner of Kyle. Okay, Rainer, yeah, we should Green Lantern we should, without a ring. Yeah, we should we should clarify. Yeah, definitely <laughs> clarify that, right? So Jade, not Jade, we think of of Cheshire on the show, right? right? Yeah, so very important. Jade, this is so Jade. Jade's oh God. So Jade goes back to <laughs> to an or to a group called. Uh, Oh, she went Infinity Incorporated. Yeah, I think that was when she was first created. And there are two characters that are the children of Alan Scott, who was the original Green Lantern, who had been obviously affected by the magic radiation of the ring that he had. And he had two children. One was Jade. The other was Obsidian, if I remember correctly. And then that sounds Jade has. Yeah, like you were saying, just to reiterate what you just said, that she had the she has the powers of a magical Green Lantern ring, but without the without a need for the ring. And yep. I'm pretty sure at this point, I think her brother died at some point. I think yeah. Obsidian died. Yeah, so that, that I think tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, so Jade's so Jade's on this in this situation. Yeah. Sorry to sidetrack. We're doing yeah. mini secret origins oh, yeah. left and right here. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um so Jade's on it. Huntress is also on for okay. a period of of time. Um and then towards the end of the series, uh Captain Boomerang Jr joins the team what (laughs) no no that's not a thing is that a thing yes that is that is a thing he's a hero as opposed to his dad who's a villain (laughs) but he struggles with with this heroic nature um i'm sorry of all the things we've talked about (laughs) that one's the hardest one for my brain to (laughs) okay okay i just got like okay that's a thing okay got it all right i filed it away captain boomerang jr is an actual thing okay yeah so you've got huntress Um, helena bertinelli you've got captain boomerang jr you've got jade this is quite a combo of characters here yeah um and the only other big point to hit on for that first run or the 2003 run is by the end of the series thunder and grace are dating oh okay okay so cool. that's anissa pierce and grace Choi. Gotcha. Gotcha, um, gotcha gotcha which then goes into this five of a kind arc where batman's coming in shaking things out putting them through a test to right. basically get a group that is even more ruthless cutthroat than this previous one it's almost Batman's answer to the Suicide Squad. Like, it Whoa. gets okay. dark. All right. Um, and the so the team members, we get uh, Captain Boomerang Jr. bails. He actually leaves for the Suicide Squad. Um, Wait. So. <laughs> I've had enough of you people. I'm going to join Waller in the Suicide Squad. Yeah. Uh-huh. In- um, okay. Nightwing bails as well, just because he doesn't want to work with Bruce. Okay. Okay. Um, Katana joins after not being in. Um, she just decides to join up. Um, Batman doesn't let Thunder join because she's not ruthless okay. enough. Mar- Martian Manhunter joins. Metamorpho Metamorpho joins. Um, Garth as Aquaman too tries to join and is told he can't um grace joins and this one will make you happy or throw you off or whatever catwoman 
joins uh, as well. <laughs> okay, this conversation <laughs> is so bizarre. Okay, okay. The outsiders are a weird team. Okay, I'm processing. I, I there's so many things like you're like so. Thunder can't join because she's not ruthless enough. But we'll get John. We'll get John Jones in here, and I'm like, wait, <laughs> is he, he's ruthless enough? And then I'm like, and also Metamorpho, and I'm just like, you just got like the shape, the crazy shape changing team. Um, okay, interesting. Okay, so so that is the lineup, and then um, the the first outing of that team is actually in Outsiders number fifty. And then the next issue to come out is called Batman and the Outsiders, issue one. Okay. So this is 2007. The team has kind of transformed. They've soft rebooted the comic series, um, but we now have this. Okay. And this was supposed to be this was supposed to be a, a covert ops team. Yes. Okay. They're black ops. They're extremely morally gray, but they do not kill because Batman. Yeah. Um, I have a, I, I wrote down a quote when I was, when I was refreshing myself on one of this, cause I think this is interesting. This is from, from Batman. He says, our strategy is intelligence. It's about applying pressure where it will do the most good. It's not brute force. Okay. Okay. That tracks for me. I'm good with that. But I'm trying to think of like, okay, so you get Martian Manhunter, definitely covert ops potential. You got Metamorpho, absolutely. Yeah. Katana, I'm, I'm in, I'm on board. Yep. Jade? Catwoman even. Catwoman? Jade? Jade's not on the team at this okay, point. Okay, so she's gone. Okay, because so I'm like, she gets She covert. gets cut. Okay. No, she gets cut. So the, the lineup going into issue one is Grace, Catwoman, Metamorpho, Martian Manhunter, and Katana. Okay, and Batman. that's an interesting team for sure. I, I'm like, I'm, my brain is like split on this like, I was because at first I was like Jade's on the team, not really a good co-op person, and then you're like, well, <laughs> Batman cuts her, and I'm like, who cuts a Green Lantern? <laughs> that's just that's just dumb. Like, yeah. But then, I, yeah. But a second ago, I was saying she, I don't think she'd be a good member of this team, and then now I'm like upset because that's just yep. a dumb idea. I don't know what I, my brain is all over yeah. the map with this. Okay, all right. Yeah, and then Thunder is because of her relationship with Grace kind of on the team batman won't officially let her operate but she keeps showing up on missions okay okay but her Um, sister her sister jennifer is not on the team no okay okay no all right and then um issue one catwoman ditches because she's not up for it she's just like eh this is this hasn't worked out i'm leaving and martian manhunter goes back to the justice league so we get two issues of him being on the team and then he's gone. <laughs> Did they just keep changing writers? Or like, I don't... I, I don't know what was going on. It's this weird transition between outside, so Outsiders issue 49 from the 2003 run, yeah. then feeds into Five of a Kind. Batman takes over the group. They have these tryouts. They go back for issue 50, have issue one of Batman and the Outsiders with this lineup, and then scrap the team. So my best guess is they were trying to build hype for this series and Catwoman and Martian Manhunter were ways to do that. Um, But they didn't actually want those characters to be committed to this series because they had other things they wanted to do with them. If you want my two cents. (laughs) Yeah. So mini Canary Debrief, don't do that. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Yeah, that's just... I mean, it's just a, I mean, you're, it's a bait and switch, you know, like, yeah. uh, it's not, it's kind of not cool. So I'm, part of me was like, oh, this is interesting. I want to see the dynamic between Catwoman and Martian Manhunter. I've never seen that before, you know, like, or yep. how does Metamorpho fitting on a team with, you know, like, like superpower and niche protection with Martian Manhunter. I want to see that going on. <laughs> and then, so, so I'm intrigued. Right. Uh, I would. I would have maybe been intrigued enough to pick up the first issue, but I, I tell you, I wouldn't pick up any of the rest of the issues, even if they were really, really good, because I don't. Because yeah. you've you've lost the trust of your readers right off the bat, unfortunately. And in my opinion, yeah. for me, like no. that's a thing no, that I, I that would bother me enough to be like, dude, I don't. I don't think you know what you're doing. You're not. 
I don't, I'm not convinced you planned ahead enough for, to have the, uh, the things I, I'm picking up that you're planting pay off. And there's yeah. nothing more frustrating well, than not having something paid off or disappear. Yeah. And the constant turnover in the outsiders is a big theme because with Martian Manhunter and Catwoman out in issue one, Cassandra Cain, Batgirl, joins in issue two. Okay, so the character we see in Young Justice as Orphan. Right. Who's ba- yep. Batgirl, right, who is the daughter yes. of Lady Shiva. Yep. Okay. She she jumps in for issue two, and then Geoforce in issue three gets transferred from the Justice League to the Outsiders. Okay. Okay. So he he was he was on the Outsiders. Batman basically picked him up, t- pulled him aside, and was like, or he was on the Justice League rather. Batman pulled him aside and said, "Hey, you want to be on the Outsiders?" And uh, he agreed. Okay. So he joins the lineup, and then issue four, Omac, um, the what? which is <laughs> yeah. So so you know you, okay, you're so Omac stands for One Man Army Corps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a character from way back in the day, and then they redid, they rebooted him as wasn't that the name of Batman's spy network? His satellite spy yes. network was called OMAC. Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah. When oh when guys, Batman we are like we are like be... in the weeds right now. Just stick with <laughs> us. Stick with us. Okay. When when Batman decided to uh, Winter Soldier everything, okay. um, he he created. OMAC, which then became sentient, tried to take over the world, right. um, was this big thing in in this big Justice League arc. They get a hold of one, reprogram it, name it Remac, and it joins the Outsiders. And then... <laughs> so so is it in a body? Or is it a sentient? Yes. Okay, yeah. it's in a body now. Because I remember yep. when I was reading that arc, it was satellites that were all over... Okay. Yeah. And then it became yeah. sentient, built itself a body. Yep. Re- yeah. Remac, which sounds like a, I don't know, like an insurance company or something. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then Green Arrow rounds out the, uh, the lineup. <laughs> okay. okay. So that's interesting, uh, which also <laughs> is kind of this toss to Young Justice where Ollie leaves with Bruce. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. And so they function as a team for a little while doing, yeah, this, Three this issues covert and then break ops. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, okay, but, okay. but close. Okay. I think they mis- make it like almost 10. Oh, okay. Um, uh, no, sorry. They make it eight issues. Okay. Um, but but I, think, I think the inclusion of both Batgirl, the Cassandra Cain Batgirl, and... Um, and Green Arrow make it at least an interesting touch point um, for the series, and it's but it's still functioning very much as this Black Ops team that is off the books, trying not to, yeah, yeah doing doing these more a lot of what we see in Young, like what we see the team do in Young Justice is what the Outsiders functions as in these comics okay um both in the original both in the 2003 run and the 2007 we get a lot of just doing one-off missions where it's like we can't have a league presence here or we're not sure that this is going to be a thing so chase it down and see you know if maybe we want to test things out you know maybe that maybe this will be a threat you guys go. You gotta get guys going first. Escalate it to the league if you need to. Okay. Um, okay. So it's and with with a lot of the stuff we've seen in season three, with having all of these different groups operating off the radar and whatnot, because the Justice League has such an official presence. Right. Um, that's a lot of what the Outsiders is about, and so I think that's just it makes for an interesting an interesting parallel yeah i'm now my brain's rolling because we've got the bat batman green arrow thing in young justice with the jokingly named batman incorporated which was a whole nother thing in the comics um where bruce kind of retires as batman but runs bat bat people in different countries right. around the world <laughs> yeah. um as an organization um 
kind of echoey of the outsiders here, but and he's working with two of the original outsiders, but he's not working with the other outsiders yet. And we yeah. got this artwork that alluded to something else that was going on. So right. I'm yeah, man. Okay. All right. So how long did this Batman <laughs> and the outsiders run go? So it, the Batman and the outsiders run goes 13 issues um, and then transitions back to just being called Outsiders because Batman dies. Um, oh, okay. So this is 2007. This is death, or um, not death in the family. Um, what's Battle for the Cow? Um, Batman's out of the picture. There's a scramble for power. All of that sort of thing. Right. Um, okay, I remember that and, vaguely. And I remember that it was like Tim was the only one who thought he was still alive and was going out and doing a bunch of stuff to try and find him. Yeah, and yeah, everyone else kind of gives up. Tim's, Tim's there, but yeah, but Bruce, Bruce gives his his final, final wish is he. So there's two kinds of approaches here. One, Batgirl, uh, being Barbara Gordon, Batgirl, okay, um, who uh, it might be, she or yeah, she is Oracle at this point because Cassandra Cain's Batgirl. Anyways, she's running, um. She she starts something called the network, okay, um, which is a way of uniting like a bunch of basically Gotham City heroes to fill in the gap after after Bruce is gone. Okay, gotcha. And and so the Cassandra Kane back get back girl is part of that. Um, Dick is part of that. Um, well, so I'm trying to think of who's in Gotham. Creeper? Uh no. Uh, we'll get to Creeper. Oh, um, okay, so Creeper but, has uh, come up. Okay, who's it? Who's but, uh, Jason Blood uh, and Jason Blood and Etrigan are they in? Are they in Gotham? I can't remember. I don't. Okay, think that they're part of this, but I um uh I think Azrael's part of it. Oh, okay, right, right. Um, I yeah, and then and then spoiler and all of the oh, that like right. Bat Family shoot offs. Yep, um, yep. That we've accumulated over the years because there's a lot. I think I think at this point, um, Damien's also in the picture. Okay, gotcha. Um, All right, but okay, but so they do. They go off and do the network. But Bruce asks Alfred to reform the Outsiders, and Alfred recruits a team of eight people that are to. They each represent a different part of Batman's persona. Okay. So they are Katana, Metamorpho, Black Lightning, Creeper, Halo, Geoforce, and Owlman. What? <laughs> and that's the 2007 run of The Outsiders. Where? So okay, I, I have a lot of I, I have more questions. How, who, okay, I'm Katana. I'm like, okay, I can see that. And then I'm like, how is yep. Geoforce supposed to be part of his personality or metamorpho interesting yeah an owl yeah. man yeah so owl man comes on as the uh as the detective this is uh roy raymond jr um fresh off of a tv show um who masquerades as owl man at night uh bruce is like this guy is the best detective I could get my hands on. So you're him now. Or so he's, he's on the team now. Um, I don't, what? (laughs) (laughs) Like, first of all, I don't know who this version is. And I'm like thinking, I'm thinking like, that's the best. You couldn't get, you couldn't get Ralph Dibney. He's like the number two (laughs) detective in the DC universe. You couldn't get detective chimp. Like you I know, get, you I I get, wanted detective. You couldn't have gotten that was like the next two best detectives in the DC universe, the elongated yeah. man Ralph Dibney, Detective Chip. You had to bring on a version of Owl Man, who is a whole thing from a whole different thing, like right. from yeah. No, Owl Man's not worth getting. No, into, not yeah. Let's but. we've already we're already <laughs> mowing the weeds down on this. This is incredible. Uh, uh. Whew. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm I'm pretty shocked and surprised, and and uh, enjoying the fact that this run actually has can, that I didn't know that much about has a lot of connections. 
with yeah. the Young Justice story from this season. So we've nodded to a few things, but before we like wrap up here, like, what do you? Are there other things that that you've seen in this run that may nod to things in Young Justice? So there is stuff both from this run and from the original run that uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see show up later in this season. I have one that might be a big deal based on a couple things that have been talked about in recent episodes of of Whelmed. Okay, all right. Um, Which is, so in the comics, Halo um, is an oracle um, who... Uh, which is spelled a u r a k l e this is the the light god thing right right so she was she's like an angel an, an angel of light or whatever right exactly <laughs> yeah okay. and and so um the she inhabits violet harper right that's not a character name in the comics or that's not a character or the name she takes on that's the character or that's the person she inhabits Oh, right okay. off I thought the it back. was the other way around. Okay, um, got you. All right, so she... Okay. So Young Justice did the clever thing of seeing, hey, Harper, we've already got a Harper. Right. Let's, just, let's just mash this up. Okay, okay. And it also makes the fact that she's named after Light being Violet right, right. Um, a little bit less convenient. Right, right. Um, <laughs> but so she is just straight up evil. Yes. Violet Harper is... She was like a, a psycho serial killer or something, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, she's a sociopath. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so some of the hints we get in um, in this uh, third season of maybe, uh, maybe the, like when we see maybe Halo's got some bad tendencies or we see flashbacks and you're like well maybe she's helping them out here um like is she helping out the villains before she becomes halo all of that stuff could tie to this fact that she was in the comics a villain okay uh my brain is (laughs) okay guys this might be huge spoiler guys because if they if they do (laughs) if they do stick with that character originally being an issue, I don't, I just can't, I can't, I can't even bring myself to think about it. Like, if the reason why this new Amalgam Halo doesn't want to talk about her past, it's not because she's necessarily flashing back to abuses she doesn't want to see, but did she do something or make choices based on that abuse that, yeah. like, like letting these people in to kill the king and queen when she had been abused by um, Markovian citizens or something like that. Oh my goodness. (laughs) Yeah. So there's definitely seeds of maybe, maybe the person that Halo's inhabiting isn't a good person. Or wasn't a good person um, or made made some really bad choices. And and the mother box doesn't want to acknowledge those choices Right. Or maybe that maybe the person, maybe the Gabriel Dow person started off to be a good person, was trying to do good things, but then ended up in terrible circumstances and making some bad decisions to survive. I don't know. Absolutely. But but the seed's been planted in my mind and I haven't been able to (laughs) haven't been able to get past it. (laughs) Dylan, Um, why did you do this to me? (laughs) (laughs) Uh It's what you have me on the show. for. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Uh. yeah, I'm, and so, I'm gonna have this in my head all day. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry, I keep interrupting you. Yeah. Oh no, no worries. I I just I've got I've got a couple other things that could be, uh, yeah, could be interesting. Do it, do it. Um. So so just rounding out kind of some of this Halo Violet Harper stuff. Um, Halo eventually leaves her body, and Violet Harper is dead. Then as a result. Um, but through a series of circumstances, she is brought back to life and retains some of Halo's abilities um, and goes by Spectra okay. and is a villain okay. um, for for a period um, until Halo then rejoins her body um, and makes her good again. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, but the uh, the 
other thing, and this gets heavy. Because um, up to now, but, it's been. I was <laughs> I was waiting for the heavy part because the rest of it. Um, this is uh, so. Uh, Geoforce, when Batman recruits him um, post mortem to become a member of the team, is he's supposed to be the leader for the team. Okay, he's that he's, but he is um, not excited about that at all. Okay, um, because he's still uh, de- going through some stuff. He um, killed Deathstroke. Okay. Um, in retaliation for stuff with his with Tara, right? Um, and when and he so he kills Deathstroke and attempts to kill himself in the process. Whoa. Okay. And and so he then is brought on as a then Batman kind of gives him this second chance. Um, to lead the outsiders, but he really doesn't trust himself. Um, and the only thing that makes me nervous here is the amount of anger we've seen from Brion in Young Justice, and the fact that we do know that Deathstroke is in play. Yeah. Um, as well as as well as Terra. Right. Dude. Um, <laughs> Dude. Okay. The uh, the other thing that I wasn't I wasn't I'm not entirely sure if Young Justice has just said no we're not doing this or if it's been alluded to and I've just missed it but in the comics um, Tara is not like she's a half sister to Brione okay um, she was born out of an affair um, and then is actually raised in America. Um, which obviously they did not go that route for her as far as the raised in America thing. Right. Yeah. In this series. Um, but I, and I don't, I hadn't picked up on anything that would suggest that they're half siblings, but I also haven't rewatched with that in mind. I think they would have planted that a little bit early. Yeah. That well, And that's if they're half sisters. (laughs) Gosh, guys, all right, so in as of this recording, we have aired our first, just our first deep dive review. So this might be coming out a little bit later, and we might get more information later on by the time this airs. But it's only it's early March right now. Um, if she is a half sister, that would explain why Jace keeps saying, "I had a daughter taken away from me." Mm-hmm. And the theory that Morgan Jenkins offered up about that Tara is Tara. Well, I'm sorry. Nope, nope, nope. What he, what, she, what, what, what Morgan put up, what, what she, what yes. she told us was that Anna and Otto might be Jace's kids. Right. My reading. So her theory, I love. And so that's kind of my new headcanon. But my theory was originally that Tara was Jace's daughter. And that's what I would have thought Blood. too. But I was like, well, how would that work? Yeah. Like, why would... Well, I mean, she? how old is she? I mean, I guess they're only a couple of years apart. So maybe Brion was quite young. But like, the, it, that gets complicated. Okay, so yes, maybe. it does. All right, so maybe, we don't know. We don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. And then, yeah, my, my only other thing I think that's interesting pulling from the original series and some of this tying to directly to Young Justice is just like in, so in the, in the comic series, uh, Halo once again is, you know, not an adult. Um, and so Katana functions as her legal guardian. Okay. Um, uh, and I love the flip of having it be Artemis. Well, to some extent. But the fact that Artemis takes her under a wing when in the original one it was Katana yeah. just made a whole lot of sense in my mind. And when I saw that, I was like, that's such a... 
Yeah, that's such a good translation. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that's fantastic. Um, I have a lot to process. So, <laughs> so I think before we get, let's come back from the weeds and let's, yep. let's wrap ourselves up here. Thank you so much for coming on the show and spending some time with us and blowing my mind five or six <laughs> times, Dylan. Where can, where, yeah, where can people find you out here on Earth Prime? So I am on Twitter at uh, DJWeaver29 um, and also um, find me on my, on my podcast, um, The Wild Fam Chalk Pot. Um, if for some reason you are both a fam of, fan of Whelmed and a fan of Adventures and Odyssey, we'd love to have you. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you don't fall into that incredible niche, um, you can still check us out, but... It is a uh, it is a deep dive into something. <laughs> do do that... a quick binge of eight hundred episodes and then uh, yeah. come back and check. Yeah, it out. they've they've got a subscription service. You can listen to them all online. <laughs> that's fan- that's that's fantastic. And you know what? I just realized your Twitter icon. Yes, <laughs> it's Nova <laughs> that we talked. It about, is Nova. We talked about earlier. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. It just made that connection. <laughs> Uh, Well, thank you. Thank you, Dylan. And thanks to everyone else for spending some time with us as well. If you'd like to join us in discussing this incredible series, you can find us on Twitter at the YJ files on Facebook at crashing the mode on Tumblr at the YJ files.tumblr.com on our website, crashing the mode.com. And if that isn't enough, you can email us at whelmed podcast at gmail.com. If you'd like to support our show, please consider sharing it with a friend and or joining our chats on social media. You can also support the show by giving us a five-star review or rating on Apple podcasts or your podcatcher of choice. And you can also find us on YouTube, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. The ratings, comments, and subscriptions help others find the show. If you do leave us a a rating or review, please let us know. Especially if you're outside the U.S., we have to look a little harder to find those. And if you are able to support us monetarily, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash crashing the mode. Even a dollar a month can help us do in-person interviews, actual play podcasts, fan meetups, discussion sessions, and more. And as always, stay whelmed, everyone. You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed. Well